ways to go over your where you think NFC is headed? Like, where, if there's any possible applications in your daily life, NFC it being used. And how sure. It? Yeah, no, happy to. It's about a six trillion. Uh, the micropayments industry is about a six trillion dollar industry worldwide. We're really excited about so, it. I mean, not even just the payment, but like smart posters and stuff like that are being like yeah. introduced right now. So for us, it's pretty exciting. As yeah, I mean, if you want to go, I mean, you're talking about the scan codes, right? Yeah. Uh, so scan codes are being used by some transit authorities uh, in terms of like in Paris, where you'd be able. It's a. It's one of the only comprehensive rollout. Uh, obviously, some people have used it for isolated. But it, it's an interesting uh, technology. I don't know how it works. One issue you may be able to ask, actually, or answer for me, sure. is how it works with your iPhone. It doesn't work with your iPhone. That's what I thought. Yeah, not yet. It was supposed. It was rumored to be released for the 4S, but it didn't wind up happening. I just was curious because I mean, I was surprised actually because I have a BlackBerry and it just has scan code and you scan it. Yeah. And uh, BlackBerry does have NFC. Yeah. In it, but it's not enabled. Right here in North America, but yeah. also, so the NFC a lot would allow it for it to be a payment mechanism. There are places around the world, yeah. uh, for example, New Jersey has gone uh, to payment by mobile phone, uh, and of course the scan codes have that ability as well. Right. So uh, and it works with PayPass over here. I've yeah. seen someone with an uh, they they had a Galaxy S from overseas yeah. and they had Google Wallet installed on it. They had ten free bucks. And they and, and well, that's why you want to open standards approach and not exactly. a proprietary mm -hmm. technology because a proprietary technology, whether it's a gift card for uh, you know your particular technology or whether it's uh, in fact uh, a Presto-like system for the fare card, means you're very limited. You can update it, but you have to specifically invest in the technology as opposed to open standard payment. So okay. anyway, happy to go. Okay, cool. What we're gonna do here, we're just gonna have two phones going just in case the audio. It should be fine from this. But. Just in case You've already talked to people, right? Oh, I'm just trying to like get okay, it in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just, if I scared. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't scare me. I just all I'm happy to. I mean, if you wanted to, it would have been fine with me. Okay. Right, so I'm just gonna start the audio right there. Just pop right in front of you. He's gonna record. So, if you can just introduce yourself. My name is Adam Jambroni. I'm the uh, former chair of the Toronto Transit Commission, uh, and uh, as well, I currently work as uh, one of the directors. Planning and innovation for the AMT of Montreal, which is the Regional Transit Board. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about the NFC initiative that you're trying to push through for the TTC? So, obviously, I'm not in control of the TTC anymore. I'm, I'm in Montreal where we're working on some things. What happened at TTC is there was a discussion about what new fair payment uh, mechanism they would use. Uh, there is the Presto card out there, which is a proprietary fair. A system that is relatively expensive. The government of Ontario has already invested $250 million with very little to show for it. And that would be okay, except that to fully implement Presto, it's going to be at least another $250 million, probably or possibly as much as $400 million. And because it's a proprietary technology, it doesn't allow you to, ch to change with the times. So it's very expensive. We don't know what's coming down. We don't know what will take off. I mean, Google Pay Wallet seems really great, and I think it's coming. But maybe it won't. Maybe something will overtake it before it really has rollout. And, and so it's very hard when you have a proprietary system to stay up to date. Uh, or, if it's not hard, it's certainly expensive. So at the TTC, we initiated last year, uh, a pro or just over a year and a half ago, a process for open standard payments. And what that is, really, is just simply a term that says, whatever the uh, payment industry does, your platform will accept it. And so it's a really basic platform that uses the industry specs, the industry back, uh, back office to support payments. So basically, I always explain anything that Tim Hortons will accept, or ESSO, uh, the TTC would accept. And it really allows you to be a lot more flexible uh, because uh, you, you'll be able to adapt almost instantly and for very little cost to whatever technology is coming next. Um, so there was a, an RFP that's a request for proposal, so it's a public call, anybody can respond. There were 11 responses, three were deemed uh, to be able to be sufficiently, technically sufficient and went forward and there was a successful outcome. Um, ASC won the contract, a big international firm that teamed up with Visa, MasterCard and other uh, smaller companies that had experience in transit. Uh, and what they offered was to cover the full capital cost of installation. So that was the, the what we were just talking about with Presto to $250 million. And they were also willing to, to guarantee, so one way you do is you can pay all the upfront costs and recoup it over 20 years, but the contract also required, and they met this, that there be a lower 
operating cost then today uh, to collect the dollar. So the TPC spent seven cents today to collect the dollar, and uh, under the ASC proposal, it has to be lower, and it was uh, substantially lower than that. So it was successful. In fact, Chicago literally just announced within the last week almost an exactly similar deal because the two uh, requests for proposals were almost exactly the same. And Chicago's accepting it. Unfortunately, TBC, the government of Ontario, doesn't want to go open standard payments. It wants to go presto. So Chicago's getting it. TBC isn't. Uh, and that's unfortunate because this would have saved hundreds of millions of dollars. And it also, with a proprietary fare system, generally they charge you more to collect the money. It has higher operating costs, somewhere around upwards of 10 cents per dollar collected. So this ASC deal would be much better. It's only politics which are preventing us from going forward here in Toronto. And of course, the, the frustrating thing about Presto, as we said, is it doesn't necessarily allow you to have the next uh, wave of technology accepted, whereas the open standard payments would continue to evolve. And it is happening in transit. In Asia, it's very common to use cell phones. Here in North America, New Jersey Transit just announced uh, they're using Google Wallet uh, because they were one of the first to use open standard payments, New Jersey Transit and uh, New York. So this is catching on uh, across the industry. Montreal right now has the Opus Fair card, which is like Presto. It's a proprietary fair technology, and they are moving to Opus 2.0, which will include open standard payments. So I would always say my, my analogy is, if you're looking for the future, you may not know exactly what it is, but would you re are you willing to bet against the biggest corporations in the world, Google, Microsoft, Apple, um, Visa, MasterCard, I mean, these are, this is huge. The micropayment industry is $6 trillion. Um, the reason the credit card companies are willing to pay to set it up is they want a top of wallet. The card you pay, whether it's a bank card or your credit card, maybe your, your cell phone that you use for everyday transit purposes, and 90% of Torontonians use transit at least once a month, is more likely the way you're going to pay for other things. And that's where they make their money back. Not on the government or not on the transit user, but on their other applications. So it's an exciting technology. It's coming, whether you like it or not. Six trillion dollars international. Uh, micropayments industry, and uh, I just hope at some point that the government gets on board. What do you think the main obstacles are for the government to start adopting this technology, especially in the TPC? What do you think? I think the biggest obstacle is they feel that they don't want another e-health scandal. They've, uh, they've put $250 million to Accenture. They've got very little to show for it. They do have a presto system kind of up and running, but it's been going down. It's had problems with weather. Um, not, the operators aren't happy with it because it hasn't proven itself. Uh, so they have a quarter billion dollars invested, uh, and they think if they walked away from it, uh, it would look bad. Having said that, from a business perspective, although it's unfortunate, you never would want to waste any money, but if, you had a, if you've already wasted $250 million, you're trying to recoup it. But if it's going to cost you upwards, say, to put all Ottawa, Toronto, and the rest of them upwards of $500 billion versus zero, almost zero capital, not quite, there'd probably be a couple of tens of millions to do some open payments infrastructure stuff, uh, that would be the responsibility of the transit authorities. But if you're looking at that from a business perspective, you would say, it's really bad that we threw away $250 million, but if we continue, we're going to cost another half a billion uh, dollars. So it's better my is to write off the 250. But that's an embarrassing political decision to make, and I think that that's uh, one thing uh, that's holding it up. And the government of Ontario has been very stubborn in this. Um, I think they want Presto. I think they're also outdated. They also see Presto as a way that they could sell to other tech, other people. You could use uh, Presto for a whole bunch of things. I just. You know, which is not a bad idea, but I think it's almost two decades old. They keep referring to Hong Kong, which has had a very successful uh, rollout of a smart card, but they're one of the only ones. They've done a, a, an amazing job, but that's because that technology was pioneered in the 1990s when it was state-of-the-art, and it, and it ended up working. They did it well. They probably got a little bit of luck. There may be some factors in Hong Kong that made it particularly uh, successful. It hasn't been duplicated anywhere else in the world, parts of it, but hasn't. So I think it's a little bit unrealistic. They're also about two decades late, and uh, at this point, they're going to lose out, uh, whether it's for transit or for the general industry, to the open standard payments to the companies that I listed. They're just not going to be able to compete. Very cool. So I think I mean, you identified a pretty uh, interesting insight is the fact that NFC, it's going to take over. I mean, yeah. it's got a lot of big companies behind it. What do you think the possibilities are for NFC beyond the TPC in your daily life and everything like that? 
Well, the reason transit is interesting is because so many people use transit on a regular basis, so it becomes part of their life. And as it become, and if you're using it in transit, you become comfortable, comfortable with it, and then you sort of branch out into other things. I think you're going to see increasingly uh, for the micro translate uh, transaction, those are under fifty dollars. Those are going to be increasingly. Uh, geared towards uh, open standard payments, um, so the, the NFC technology, and it's going to roll out. I mean, it, you know, cash. People sometimes bring up the fact that you know you have to pay, like the merchant pays one and a half, two percent. The reality is, cash costs a lot of money to manage. Uh, you, it does take time. You have to manage it. It's a security risk. Uh, whereas NFC does have some charges, but overall provides a lot higher accountability. You can track your purchases or your your sales, it makes it a lot easier and it's going to roll out. People want to use it, they want to be able to do this and uh, it's really just a matter of time. And anyone holding back, um, especially if they're in the micropayments industry, might not. If you're in the high-end uh, sales business where you're selling hundreds of dollars of items, probably not as important, certainly not in the short run, um, but this is coming and um, I, I think it's just a little bit foolish to think that you could uh, fight against it. Have you heard of any other initiatives that you're excited about that well, will take advantage of NFC? Well, I'm, I'm, excited, uh, you know, I'm excited to see, it's not new, but it is new in North America uh, and Europe to some extent. I'm excited to see the rollout of the uh, uh, Google Wallet as well as the uh, other main me methods of payment with your cell phone. We haven't quite seen that. We're still, I'm also excited to see when people finally accept that this happens. You know, I was in a taxi a couple days ago, and I think my fare was 850, and like, it's such a challenge paying for a taxi fare in Toronto. They don't really like it. Sometimes I kind of get the sense that maybe they're stalling. And yet, I, you know, I always tell them in a nice way, and I say, well, you know, I'm much more likely to use taxis more if I could just simply pay. And you see this in places like Taiwan with the T-Mobile uh, money, where the whole, it's all integrated, makes it very easy. And it's, you, you don't have to carry cash as a cab driver. And also, I look in my wallet, I don't have any cash because I forgot to go to the bank machine. Well, right now, I might not be able to take a taxi uh, in all cases if I could just use this. And this is true of other, that's just one, Example, it's true of a lot of other industries. So I think it's going to revolutionize a lot of the, uh, the smaller transactions in the city. And so I'm sort of excited about the chips of technology. They're all going to use the base technology, how they uh, turn out. So some people, you know, may not want to you know, pull out their phone all the time. So they'll, uh, you know, have a little fob on their uh, keychain if that's comfortable uh, for them. There's, you know, I, we'll have to see exactly how creativity takes over, because I think once this becomes standard technology, people are going to come up with creative ways of doing it, and uh, it becomes interesting. Also, the merging of the RFID technology into it. So, like, for example, in transit, you know, you can warn people, especially at stations, that as they approach a, a, a fair payment line, they'll be charged because they have an RFID tag that that once they go in and stay in a zone, I mean, there's different ways to prevent someone from being charged by just sort of glancing or walking by. But then you don't even have to pull out your wallet, there's no, or your phone, it's just your charge. And I think that that's gonna be an exciting combination because it allows you to do things, for example, in transit of multiple door loading, right? As people come in, they're charged, and the vehicle moves around a lot faster. So things like that are gonna be exciting. I mean, this might be an unfair question given the uncertainty of the market at the moment, yeah. but if you were to make a bold prediction on when NFC is going to be widespread in North America, like 